Well, welcome everybody. It's an exciting day here in the Atlanta Dream organization. And a couple weeks ago, we announced the hire of head coach Tanisha Wright. Coach Wright, thank you so much for being here with us today. No problem. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, we got some more exciting news coming up. Dan Padover from the Las Vegas Aces has just been announced as the GM and executive vice president of basketball operations for the Atlanta Dream organization. Congratulations, Dan. Thank you so much. Really, really excited to be here and especially excited to be with Tanisha and Darius. We're excited to have you, but the exciting news doesn't just stop there. We've also got interim head coach Darius Taylor from the previous season, who's just been announced as assistant GM for the Atlanta Dream. Congratulations, coach. Thank you, Tabitha. Uh, happy to be here. And I, I think we have a great leadership team in place. So I'm looking forward to working with them and us getting the ball rolling to, to success. But well, we are so excited to have you guys here. But I just want to kind of, you know, I got to know you, Coach Wright, a couple weeks ago. Yep. And we know Coach Taylor also, but I kind of wanted to get to know our new GM, Dan Padover. So, Dan, you know, a little bit of your background. You're coming from Vegas, but you graduated from UConn with a degree in business administration. And you kind of took on some unpaid gigs throughout your career. What made you want to get into women's basketball? And, you know, how did that role morph into what you do today? Yeah, you know, um, when I was in college, I obviously went to University of Connecticut, uh, which has an okay women's basketball program. <laughs> and, you know, my senior year, I, uh, I did some work cutting some video. Um, and from there, you know, I, I, I had a job actually working for Liberty Mutual in Boston um, after college. And instead, I applied to, you know, basically every professional college team in the country. And I, I got an unpaid internship with the Sixers. And it was really like the beginning of how I learned what it takes to be in this profession. Um, it was in the video room. And from there, I, j I just kind of worked my way up. But it was really exciting. And those little things are what you take along the way. Now, you're only 30 years old. Well, at the time that you got the award, you were only 30 years old. But two years in a row, you were the consecutive winner for the position of executive GM of the year in the league. At being 30 years old, what does that say to you to have the support of your peers? Um, and how does that encourage you day to day? Yeah, I think all of us in this profession, um, it's really important to have people that support you along the way. Um, and since I've stepped foot in the W, both players, staff, coaches, um, everybody's been super supportive of myself because I've always just tried to work as hard as I could and treat people the right way. And if you do that, uh, you'll make a lot of friends along the way. And because of that, I think, you know, I've been able to build relationships and I was very thankful for the honor. I think both Tanisha and I would say we'd much rather win the championship than anything else. Um, but yeah, it was really exciting. Now, this is a relationship that's been happening for the past what, four to seven years is what I thought I overheard you guys saying. Can you guys yeah. expand on that a little bit more? Maybe a little longer since 2015 when I first arrived um, in New York and then was Dobo at yeah. that time, right? Yep. And so just Again, Dan talked about being around great people and amazing people. And so just being able to interact with him as just a person, Dan was great um, in the years that I spent in New York. And then from there, he went to Vegas and I followed him. <laughs> <laughs> followed him to Vegas for two years. So um, directly working with each other for about four years, but, but have known each other for about six years now. Yeah. So when it comes to now, when you got hired, Dan was not here yet. and He was not involved <laughs> in your hiring. How did that come about as far as you taking that position? And did that kind of influence you to come here after you saw that Coach Wright did get the head coaching position? Yeah, I mean, I'll start. Sure. I mean, for me, um, I think one of the most appealing things when I started to look at this job was knowing Tanisha was in place. Um, there's an inherent trust there. Um, and I also know Tanisha's, you know, in my opinion, right now, one of the best young coaches in professional basketball, and I think pretty soon we'll say just one of the best coaches in professional basketball. So for me, it was a huge selling point. Yeah, and for me, I mean, an opportunity like this doesn't come around yeah. over and over and over. So when, when the opportunity came, I think for my growth and for an opportunity to be in Atlanta, it was time for me to take the next step um, in my coaching career. Now, Coach Taylor, your previous position with the team, your interim head coach, and you were assistant coach before that. When it comes to your new positioning, your role of blending both of those, how do you see, like, what is your main goal and how do you see that kind of morphing into itself this season? Well, I mean, I think I'd bring a, a different perspective. Uh, one, because 
Um, you know, I know the players um, that are on this team. I know the players in this league. And then also now stepping into a front office role uh, where I, you know, I can help bridge the gap from the player, from a coaching standpoint to the business side. And it gives me an opportunity to also, uh, you know, help build a team from the ground up as well as uh, just use some of my other skill sets that I've developed along the way, which is, you know, helping players off the court with player development. I see that as a, a need and it's a, a big resource uh, that I know ownership is behind in terms of continuing to not just help our players on the court, but off the court as well. I would say that, you know, when I was working for the team this past season, and I told you yourself, I said, I hope that the new coaching staff does in some way retain Coach Taylor because I do feel like the players did gravitate towards you um, and that you were a player's coach. And now that I'm seeing the staff that's coming in, it seems like you guys are all players, coaches, and player personnel. And I saw a video of you, Dan, um, in the Wubble last year when you were like banging on the glass like it was a hockey game and the players were like just giving you that fist bump. When it comes to being players' coaches, the importance that that brings on the floor, where, do, where does your gift come from? Where does that passion come from? And Dan, I want to start with you and kind of go down the line, but where does that passion come from of being a player's coach and why is that so important to you? Yeah, you know, look, I came into this league um, as a young 23 year old who knew nothing um, and the players really embraced me and the players are the reason we're all here. Um, so I, I never forget that. And, you know, for me, it's all about creating an environment that the players feel comfortable, creating an environment that the players feel they can compete in. And at the end of the day, um, you want to be able to say, we did right by the players. So I think that's all of our mindsets. It's just a matter of which angle we're coming from. But that's, you know, that's number one in our mind. I think for me as a, as a coach, it's all about building relationships. I mean, you have to have relationships with the players, right, in order for them to, to buy into what you're asking them to do. And so what's really, really important to me is building, uh, cultivating an atmosphere where they know that I care about them, not only on the court, but off the court. And so I think that that's important. First and foremost, you build those relationships and then it kind of just moves on from, from there. And just to echo what they're saying, um, you know, this is a player first league. I, I think also that, you know, these women deserve deserve that. They deserve, Absolutely. you know, the tools and the resources they need to be successful. And, you know, for me too, just, um, you know, coming from the coaching side, kind of just having a, a you know, a better understanding of, of, of what they need and, and how I can, again, just help bridge that gap and, and do all that I can to make sure they have the resources they need to be successful. Coach Taylor, we can, you can speak to this, um, from being in it, but you know, the last year, Atlanta, the Atlanta Dream, excuse me, have uh, been across the headlines. <laughs> but most notably, it's been the 2020 ESPN Humanitarian Year of the uh, Team of the Year, excuse me. When it comes to the Atlanta Dream and a team that takes on so much social justice work, that's a lot of pressure. That's that's a lot of politics. That's you know, U.S. senators now in office. There's you know, we're encouraging voting on this team. It's a lot of pressure. But then off the court, also we've had some headlines as well that we have to, I guess, address. Dan, I want to start with you. Why take on this role? Why get into that pressure? Why is it so important to you to kind of help try to correct this? Yeah, look, I think the, you know, the sentiment that we've all been saying is this is day one. Um, and, you know, from this point forward, our job is to get better every single day. What's with the past is the past, um, but we're going to rebuild this organization to prominence. And we're going to do it around really good people like the two standing next to me today. And that, I think, is the most exciting part. Coach, we talked about culture when we spoke yeah. and building culture from the ground up. So uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, I mean, I agree. I agree with Dan um, that moving forward, right, we're building a new culture, a new identity. And we're going to want people, not just players, people, right, that, um, that align with that culture and that identity. And I think once we have people and players and staff and different things in place, like Dan said, you're going to see a very uh, prominent franchise, a model franchise for the WNBA. And Coach Taylor, I think you were part of the cleaning up part of that back end. So for you, being a part of both roles, I know you expanded on that earlier, but when it comes to you know being in that role that you previously had and then coming in this new season, with, you know what can you offer when it comes to I guess knowing that narrative and knowing what the players need 
and being able to provide that this season? Yeah, I mean, I think with, you know, the players that are on our roster, obviously there, there's a trust. I think also there's an understanding of, of what's needed to move forward. I think that, um, you know, it's a new era. We're not looking backwards. And, and, you know, we have a leadership team in place now to, you know, to help us build, build the right way and, uh, you know, set the tone and have a culture uh, that will be successful. You know, working for these legendary coaches. So, Dan, you've worked on the 76ers previously. You've worked under UConn, under Ariama, Gino Ariama. Yeah, so, you know, primarily, you know, I was a student then, so I didn't have yeah. a lot of exposure. <laughs> but I think, you know, the main coaches that I've been fortunate enough to be a part of were I was at Rutgers with Coach Stringer mm -hmm. for a couple of years, which was just, you know, amazing to be around such a powerful leader. And then, obviously, being around Bill for, for such a long, long period of time has been really exciting. Yeah. So when working for these legendary coaches, I mean, that's a lot. You don't want to take anybody's individual style, but collectively, what have they offered you and how do you kind of put those things together, together, gel them, and then go about your day to day? How does that help you day to day? I think for me, you know, the two things that, you know, are always common are work really hard and treat people really well. Um, and if you do those two things, good things happen. Um, with Bill, I think he always, you know, he always ran things through honesty and trust. And at the end of the day, you got to have fun. So I think we'll, we'll all take a little bit of that with us. But you create your own path. Uh, I think I've taken a little bit from everybody I've been a part of, including working with people like Tanisha. You pick things up along the way. And I think everybody a part of our journey makes us who we are. Coach Taylor, you gonna take him anywhere around Atlanta to visit? <laughs> Any uh, sightseeing? I um, mean, there's so much stuff here. I mean, the, just the, the culture in Atlanta um, is is a great culture, and there's I mean, there's a lot around music, around food, mm -hmm. around the film industry. I mean, there's just so many different ways I can take them. So once they get settled, you know, I take them around the city a little bit and let them let them feel feel that culture that Atlanta has. It's one of the greatest cities in this country. We enjoy eating. <laughs> Step one. Yeah, we Step enjoy eating. There is plenty of that to do. Yeah. You guys going to any of the Braves games? Uh, not yet. I haven't. I haven't been to any yet. Not, not yet, but we need to. Back yeah. in the back in the series, first yeah. time since '99. Y'all yeah. get tickets. Let me know. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, back to this. But okay, so relocating. Um, Family-wise, what's going on with the family? Do you have any issues of relocating? Does it ever become hard to kind of leave that behind? As yeah, far as yeah it's, look, it's always a challenge, but I think anybody in this industry kind of has to figure out that that balance. I mean, this happens so quick. You know, you just you pick up the pieces and you go from there and you make it work. Well, the question, um, and I'll, I'll wrap it up with this one, but the question that I know everybody is uh, waiting to hear and I kind of want to hear from all of you guys we see all the pieces coming in personnel wise as far as the coaching staff, the GMs, player wise. What are we looking for this upcoming season when it comes to the dream? Well, this is day one. <laughs> we're going to reiterate that this is day one for us and we're going to, you know, we're going to take our time with any um, well built machine or organization. It was done over time and with patience. And so I think that we're going to do that, but but not excluding the fact that we're looking for for people who are accountable, right, that have high accountability, great work ethic, and as Dan has continued to say, that are just great people. We want to be, we want to surround ourselves with great people at all times. Well said, Coach. Well, I thank you guys so much. Coach Taylor, thank you so much. Dan, thank you so much great for being here. Coach Wright, I look forward to working with all of you guys, but thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you. Dream fans, see you later.